In this Grasshopper tutorial, we want to use a parametric and geometric pattern. As you can see, uh, we can change the parameters to produce different results. And I'm going to tell you how uh, you can define a simple parameter to make the base results. You can see even I can add something like this to the patterns and uh, make it something uh, changeable. Also, we can change the number of the patterns we need in the X and the Y direction. So that's really easy. We can use a simple array for that. Uh, be sure to watch the video till the end because we're going to talk about how you can give that a thickness. So at the end, we will also produce a thickness like this uh, for the results. And then you can extrude that to make it as a solid. Okay, before we start this tutorial, if you're new to our channel, welcome. Uh, subscribe because we have weekly tutorials about Rhino Grasshopper. And you can also watch this playlist up here, which will help you to learn uh, grasshopper the basics and why you should learn it and we also have a course about grasshopper if you want to learn grasshopper step by step and start from the beginning to advanced you can watch and check out our lessons in this playlist and enroll in our course from powercourse.com website uh, okay let's get started from scratch and what I want to do is to show you the base pattern for example if you just take a look at this uh, what is the parameters we can define to make this happen, okay? Uh, why I usually use different points to check out the best parameter possible. So if we go with these points here and take a look at these points, you can see that they are connected as a rectangle. And then we can define the base pattern here. So this is one of the ways you can just find and discover the pattern you can see that this is really simple it's in a square and then we will have this pattern a mirror here and then we'll mirror that again to produce that if we want to use other points that's going to make that complicated for example if I use these points uh, you can see that this is going to give you uh, curves and lines out of this boundary so remember you have to uh, find the best thing possible for your pattern. So that's really easy. What we want to do is to produce these things, okay? And these are the base patterns. Uh, let's just take that out so you can see what I'm doing and get started with the grasshopper definition. I'm going to move that here and delete these things, okay? So now what we want to do is to go to the curve, the primitive, and use a rectangle here. So I'm going to go to the rectangle with the bifocals plugin so you can see what I'm doing and we can just give it a size when you give a number slider to the X size and the Y size because it's a domain input it's going to make that from zero to that number so you can see that we can control the size of the rectangle uh, which is basically square because I gave the same number for the X and the Y then what I want to do is to make this pattern the best way is that if we have this square here Assume that we had, let's just go to blue, we had another square inside this, okay? So first we can rotate and scale this square. This is the first step we want to do. And then we want to connect from the centroid to the mid edges and then connect that as a line. So that's really easy. Uh, what we want to do is to make a scale from this rectangle. The center is the center of the rectangle. I'm going to go to the curve and pick up the polygon center. It's faster than area and it's going to give you the center of vertices, edges and area. It doesn't really matter for a rectangle, it's the same. And then we can just play with a number from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 maybe because we don't want to make that uh, really small to zero or too big to just match all the uh, square. So now that we have to also rotate this, I'm going to use a rotate 3D, which is a complete rotation. We want to rotate this from the center, which is the center of the square. The axis is the Z, which is fine for this. This is the Z axis. We want to rotate that. That's okay. And now let's just zoom here. Uh, the angle, we can right click and select degrees and go from uh, maybe 0 to 90 degrees if we want to just rotate that from 0 to 90 degrees. It's going to give you complete results. I'm going to turn that off. And we have the base 
square inside. So what we want to do is to connect the center of this one, which is basically the center of the, uh, uh, the main one. Uh, we can use this point. Let's just connect that to a point for further use. And then we want to go to the curve and use the explode tool to explode this into its segments. Now we have the four segments of this. We want the center of this uh, segment, so I'm going to go and use the uh, point on curve tool here. And if you give that, you can see it's at the middle of these. Let's just turn that off. And now we can connect this one to these four points, uh, to the curve and to the line, and connect it here. That's how we can do that. So remember, we can play with this rotation here. We can even play with the mid, so it's going to give you bit, uh, different results. But for now, let's just stick with the mid. Now we have to connect these lines from here to the corners. So again, we have these four points. We have these. Uh, we need the vertices at the corners of this. So again, we have to go to the curve explode the main square and have the vertices here. There's also a trick here. You can see that this has five because it goes from the start again to the end. That means it's like this uh, first one, second, third, fourth, and again, the last one is the first one. So if I connect a line from these to the corner. You can see it's okay, but we have a problem with two lines here. So if you want to fix that, you can simply use the shortest list, which is a data management in Grasshopper. Uh, it's going to filter the inputs and give the same number of outputs to that. So if we want to connect that to this, we can simply put that as an input output thing. And when we have four and five inputs is going to give us four and four. It's basically the shortest list. Okay, so we now have those lines. We can turn that off. And you can see that we can play with that pattern. Okay. Rotate this. Scale. And even if you want to just change the rules, you can play with this and produce different results. Okay, now we have to mirror this once for better results. I'm going to use the mirror, use the shift key to connect that lines to the input. The default plane is YZ, which is fine. It's the YZ plane. And now we need another plane, which is XZ. So I'm going to again use this mirror, mirror these lines with the shift key and the mirror, which is all of them, and use an XZ plane. So let's just give this XZ plane. And that's it. So that is the way we can turn off the main thing here, turn off the center. And now you can see that it's going to change all the results. That's how we can play with this and even with this number. Okay. So now we have the base one and we can make a complete array from that. So I'm going to use the array rectangular. That's the base one. It's going to be, let's just put all of them in one curve. I'm going to use the shift key again, shift the mirrors and all of those patterns are inside and inputs and here we give it to the cells okay now we need a cell which is simply the base cell of this we have to give the rectangle which just confines this pattern so i'm going to go to the surface and use this bounding box connected to the bounding box it's going to make bounding box for all of those lines but i'm going to right click and say a union box give me a complete box. Uh, to the cell, you can see it's going to extract the rectangular array cell simply by giving that box to the cell and we'll have that result. Okay, the X count can be from one to maybe 12. 
10 from 1 to 12 for the x count and y count. You can see that we can increase the number to produce that pattern. We also have some different patterns in our course. So also check out the 2D patterns and 3D patterns from our uh, course categories. That is really also uh, amazing different patterns added to our course lessons. Okay, let's go and make a boundary on that. So I'm going to again use a bounding box. And this time if I say union box, you can see it's not going to give you the results. That is because they are all in, uh, they, are all, uh, they are in groups. So I'm going to right click and flatten that. Uh, so all of those array geometry, the 512, uh, patterns or lines are in one group. If you don't know about flatten and graft, I'm going to put that up here. Just check that out. We have talked about this before. So now we have this bounding box from this. If I want to extract the border, a quick tip you can use is to go to the Parms menu, Geometry, uh, connect the surface to the box. It's going to convert a, a box output to a surface output and then connect a curve to that. That, that's going to turn that off. That was the pattern we had. That is the boundary. So you can see how easy it is to make a parametric pattern which we can control its shape. Use different results. By defining these things. That's really easy. Okay, at the and at the end of this tutorial, we want to make this uh, a complete thickness. So I'm going to go to the intersection, physical, and use the surface split. So let's just go to the surface split. The surface we want to split is the base surface we had here. And now we want to give those curves, we want to split that. So before we give the curves, I'm going to right click and flatten because if it's in groups, it's going to give you some trouble. It's going to uh, split one by one. So remember always flatten with uh, the input so all of those curves uh, split the surface at once. But for now we can see that we have a flatten here so it's no uh, big deal. We can give that to the input and if I bake that you can see that we have the fragments here. So that's completely okay. Now we want to extract the curves. So we just simply connect a curve to that. And we have the base curves of this. Uh, the next one, uh, next thing we need is an offset. I usually use the offset curve loose. I've also talked about this in our course. So let's use this technique. Uh, because it's going to offset outwards, I'm going to distance expression and minus x. Turn this off. And you can see that you can give this also a thickness, something like that. Remember, you, if it's intersecting, it's going to give you wrong results. And then we can give that border curve. And also, you can offset that if you want the same. Okay, that's from a plugin. So I'm going to use the base offset here, give the distance. And now we can just combine these two uh, into one curve. So uh, to make that surface thing, okay, I'm going to go to the surface and use this boundary and flatten to input. So all of those curves are going to just use the shift key to add that up to the input. So you can see it's going to make a boundary from all of those curves. Uh, now we can extrude that if we want to make that in uh, 3D in the Z direction. You can see that that's the thickness. Maybe we just want that 2.5. And we can also connect a surface from the Parms menu, geometry, a surface to the offset curves to make the windows. So if I bake this into layer one and Bake that into layer two. And you can see that from artistic view. And that's the pattern, okay? So that was the tutorial of how you can use a parametric pattern, a geometric pattern with Grasshopper, and produce it with 
defining and changing those parameters to make different results. And thanks for watching. Remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Comment below to uh, help and support our channel. And see you next time.